Okay, um, I'm, this is, uh, kind of, I'm back with another video about coordinates. Okay, um, here our situation is we have a vector space V and we have a basis for V. And we know that, um, if we have a basis, we can take a vector in V and find its coordinates. Okay, so let's do that. If we have a vector v in v, we can find its coordinates. We can solve this equation. We can find all the coordinates, which are just the scalars, that when you combine the scalars with the vectors in the basis, you get the vector back. Okay. Now, now we know, um, you know, every vector has a unique representation in this way. And so that gives us a way we just define the coordinate vector of V relative to V. Well, you just put the scalars in a column, column vector. And wherever the scalars live, that gives you a column vector in Kn. Okay, so this is called um, the coordinate vector of V relative to B. Okay, so we start from there. And in this short video, I just want to establish that the coordinate vector has these nice properties. If you take the sum of V plus W, the coordinates of that is just the sum of coordinates of V and the sum plus the, sum, the coordinates of W. Okay. So you can add the two vectors and then take their coordinates or take the coordinates then add and you get the same thing. And similarly with scalar multiplication, um, if you take um, the vector multiplied by a scalar and then take the coordinates, that's the same as taking the coordinates then multiplying by the scalar. Okay, and in the third part of this theorem I wanted to express that, um, you know, call this a function, we make a function called like taking coordinates relative to B. If I define that function, that gives me a map from vectors to column vectors with entries in K, and that function is one to one and on to, and satisfies these two properties. Um, functions like this are gonna be called linear, which we'll see. And so this, uh, this is one of the first examples of a linear function which is a function which takes a vector and gives you the coordinates. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to show you, how would we show that uh, the sum of a vector, the coordinates of the sum is the sum of the coordinates. And I also wanted to show you that uh, this function is on to, that, that is one to one. We, uh, I mean, it is just, saying that it's one to one is just saying that uh, the coordinates of a vector um, well I should say like it what it says is that uh, two two different vectors have to have different coordinates okay which kind of comes from things we've already talked about. Okay, so let's show that it's on to and show this first thing. Okay, so proof. Okay, well, we want to write down what are the coordinates of V and W. Well, that's, um, we know that V must look like C1, V1, plus C2, V2 plus C and Vn. This is because every vector of V is a linear combination of these Vi's. That's what it means to be a basis, well, a unique linear combination. Okay. And similarly, we can find make W a linear combination of the Vi's, but maybe with different scalars. Okay, so here the Cn's, the Ci's and the Vi's live in the scalar field. Okay. 
And now to find the coordinates of v plus w, well, we just take these two equations and add them up. Okay, and if we're just a little bit careful, we'll be okay. Because we know that addition of vectors is commutative, so we want to take this vector and just move it past all the v's and right next to v1. And d2, v2, we want to move it next to c2, v2, and so on, right? So we're just, um, we're not changing the terms in the sum, we're just changing the order. So we get, we should get the same vector if we do that. We get this sum. Okay, now let's just group them in this way. This is by, we can do all these things by associativity and commutativity. Okay, now um, the distributive law says that this vector is really c1 plus d1 times v1. Okay. But now we've written V plus W as a linear combination of V1, V2 up to Vn. So the scalars that appear, they must be the coordinates of V plus W. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means the coordinate vector of V plus W is a vector whose first entry is C1 plus D1, second entry is C2 plus D2. Cn plus Dn is the last entry. Of course, this is just the sum of two vectors. The first vector is just the c's. Second vector is the d's. And well, that just means the first vector is the coordinates of v, the second vector is the coordinates of w, and that's the end. Okay, so we've shown that um, the coordinate of the sum of the vectors is the sum of the coordinates. Again, that means that when we take coordinates, we um, taking the coordinates remembers all the all the properties we care about of the original vector space. And the things we care about in this class are a vector addition and scalar multiplication. Um, if if the if this vector space had other things, they're kind of forgotten when you take coordinates. Like for example, as we saw. Um, you know, you can multiply polynomials together, but those properties are forgotten when we take coordinates because um, because this, doing this only kind of respects the scalar multiplication and vector addition, not other things, you know. Okay, what else can we do? Um, I also wanted to show you why is this uh, function onto, so let x be uh, a column vector in kn and what what vector w has coordinates equal to x okay so let's write down what is x Okay, then we'll take W equals, okay, I'm going to leave this blank for you to think about. Okay, so tell me what should go in these, in these spaces. Um, just pause the video and try to answer that for me. Okay. Um, well, the answer is, if you want W to have first coordinate X1, well, that means you should put X1, V1. If you want it to have second coordinate X2, well, you should put X2, V2. Oops. 
and I messed up the spacing. Whoops. So it should be x1 v1 plus x2 v2 all the way up to xn vn. And now automatically this vector w will have coordinates x1 up to xn. Okay, so that means that phi of w equals x. So phi is on two, and that's the other thing that I wanted to prove in this video. Okay, so now um, taking coordinates, it kind of like we have this weird, unfamiliar vector space over here, v, but we have a finite basis v on up to vn. And when you take coordinates, Once you find so once you do the work of finding a basis and finding out how to take coordinates, once you do that, you land in a very familiar space, um, okay, and like column vectors. Okay, that means like whatever vector space, whatever vector space you care about, um, you only need to worry about really uh, column vectors with. Um, you know, in Kn, okay. Um, of course, if the vector space V has other properties like um, angles or something, well, then it we need to make take further steps to preserve like whatever properties of V. Like, if there's other important things you care about about V, like maybe it's um maybe it's a uh, you know, some like complete vector space, or like you can, and you can do analysis on V, or maybe it has some other properties like an inner product. Well, then, like the way you take coordinates, you need to like adjust that, and we'll talk about that later. But for now, if you all you care about is scalar multiplication and addition, you just take coordinates and all this weird stuff about V that um, may be unfamiliar just gets replaced by um, column vectors which, uh, you know, pretty easy to work with. Okay, and that's um, going to be the end of this video. Uh, thanks for watching.